What's going on everybody? This is Ian Robinson and welcome back to part two of the Retopology Brush. In this video, we're going to cover the advanced features you need to know. In the last video, we learned that if we use the left mouse button or tap on our screen, that we can go ahead and put down points. And then pressing and holding the space bar, we can go ahead and place a quad. But if you have a row of points that you would like to turn into quads, press and hold the space bar, then tap on the screen or press the left mouse button and draw a cross to create those quads. Let go and it snaps to your mesh. So in the last video, we learned how we can go ahead and click several points down and then press and hold the space bar for our secondary draw size to create quads relatively quickly. We also learned if you press and hold alt, you can go ahead and drag out multiple versions of your quad really fast. However, what if we want to go ahead and draw a bunch of points really quickly to fill the space and retopologize this flat area fast? In order to do so, let's go ahead and zoom in. If you press and hold alt, and left click your mouse one time, you can see here that now I'm drawing a green line with two points. And if I let go, it's gonna go ahead and give me those two points. I can also drag it one more time and now it fills the space with a projected quad. If I click anywhere on the mesh, it's gonna go ahead and put that quad right where I want it. Also, what I can do is as I'm dragging out different points here, I wanna make sure that I'm drawing out in a specific order so that the topology follows suit. And I go ahead and click, and now the mesh is there. But this is only two points. What if I wanna draw multiple points? So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go ahead and press on hold Alt and drag out my two points just like I normally would. But then from here, I'm going to left click anywhere on this edge and then move my mouse or my tablet to the left or to the right. So what I'm gonna do is left click anywhere on this edge and then move my mouse to either the left or to the right. And now you can see here, I'm drawing out multiple points. It will also remember this selection. So now when I go ahead and press and hold Alt and drag out more lines, you can see here that now it's giving me multiple quads. So from here, I can go ahead and just drag this out as needed. And once I'm satisfied, I can go ahead and click on my mesh. And now I have all these points drawn out in nice clean patch. And what if we want to add multiple edge loops instead of just one to our initial mesh? To do so, in the previous video, we learned that you could just press the space bar hovering over an edge, go ahead and left click one time, and drag up and down to where you can go ahead and see that edge loop. All you need to do is let go of the space bar and then move your mouse or your pen to the left or to the right to get multiple edge loops. And as soon as you're ready, just let go and it adds it automatically. In the last video, we learned if we hover over an edge, press and hold Alt and then drag out an edge, we actually can extrude another quad. But what we can also do is press and hold Alt, drag out that edge loop, let go of Alt, and now press and hold Control. And what you can do is if you go to the left or to the right, you can actually have multiple edge loops. We also can go up and down and give us an entire row. So we can go to the left or to the right to see how many edge loops we want. And we can go up and down to see how many of those columns that we would like to have. And once we're satisfied, we go ahead and let go. And that gives us a new patch. What's also neat about this is that at any point in time, if I want to drag out another set of loop, it's going to remember how many loops I had before. So I can go ahead and quickly just get some nice topology. Also note that I have multiple points now, and if the points are the same, when I drag this out, it's gonna go ahead and try to snap, always making sure that we have a nice watertight mesh. And another neat part about the Alt Extrude for any edge is that when I go ahead and press and hold Alt and I drag out another edge, if I let go and tap Alt one time, it's now gonna go ahead and give me a solid row. And if I press Alt one more time, now it's gonna give me an entire loop. And of course we can go ahead, press and hold control and we can decide how many edge loops we would want. So say something like this, and then we can go ahead and just extrude out an entire loop completely. We let go and now it's gonna go ahead and project to that mesh. Now there might be instances where you wanna actually move parts of your mesh. So in the previous video, we said if you grab an edge, you can go ahead and move an edge. You can also grab a point and you can move a point. Now this is determined by draw size by default. And so of course we can always just press S on the keyboard and get a much bigger draw size. And then we can go ahead and start dragging that edge or that point and the whole mesh will follow. Just like with most brushes, we have a focal shift and a draw size that is attached to this brush. And so of course, if we go to our focal shift and turn this down to negative 100 and have a pretty big draw size, we can actually grab an entire part of a mesh and we can go ahead and reposition that exactly where we want that to be. Furthermore, if you wanna actually just move a single point instead of actually moving the entire mesh, we can go to the brush menu 
And down at the bottom, you'll notice we have a retopology tab. So you're going to be presented with a few different options. You have adaptive draw size, move by draw size, focal shift adjust, alternate smooth, and snap threshold. So let's say we want to move part of our mesh, but we don't want the draw size to be affected by this. We can actually come here to move by draw size, uncheck that one time. And now what we're going to do is no matter how big or small my brush is, it's only ever going to move the one point that I chose to click on. Same thing goes with the adjust focal shift. If we go ahead and just click our mesh with zero focal shift, it's going to go ahead and move that mesh, but it's going to kind of give you like that little wobbly effect. So if we go ahead and just turn that off, instead of dropping this down to negative 100, we could just now click anywhere on the mesh and that's going to move the entire topology as we need it. So if I go ahead and press and hold shift and come up to the top, you might notice that there is a smooth retopology brush that is now turned on with the retopo brush. And what this will do is allow me to just smooth the inside of the mesh and actually match that topology to whatever area I'm trying to retopo on. What is also really cool about this is that I can actually shrink this mesh down. So if I go ahead and press and hold shift and I start smoothing and then I let go of shift, it's going to go ahead and allow me to shrink that down. Now that's pretty aggressive, so let's go ahead and turn down the intensity by holding shift, coming up to intensity and turning that down. And now as I'm smoothing and I let go, it can go ahead and shrink that mesh and allow me to fit it exactly where I need it to be. And of course, what we can do is we can also go up to the retopology brush menu and come in and turn off alternate smooth. So now I can go ahead and press and hold shift start smoothing, and even if I let go to relax smooth, the edges will now not be affected. So you can either have the edges affected by turning on alternate smooth, or you can have it turned off, whichever suits your preference. So in the previous video, we also learned that you have two different draw sizes. You have your initial draw size, which helps you actually put points down and also move edges and points wherever you need them. And then if you press and hold the space bar, you have a second draw size where you can press S and give yourself a much bigger draw size so you can see exactly how to make your quads and what ZBrush will look at when it's hovering over those different edges and points. And so, of course, if we would like to ignore the two different draw sizes, what we can do is turn off adaptive draw size, and now you have one draw size to rule them all. And the last feature in the retopology menu is, of course, the snap threshold. And so what we can do here is we can adjust how ZBrush looks at the snapping ability between edges and points. So, of course, with it at one, it will go ahead and detect as quickly as possible when there is another point and snap to that point. No problem. Same thing with an edge. As I'm going and getting closer to that edge, as soon as it detects it, it will go ahead and snap. However, you can adjust this all the way down to zero. So which means if it's at zero and I try to go ahead and snap to that point, it will pretty much ignore that point altogether and not snap. But as soon as we turn it on, even at something like 0.4, as soon as it gets nice and close, it will go ahead and snap. This way you can adjust exactly how ZBrush will snap, giving you a more custom experience. That's going to go ahead and wrap it up for part two. In part three, we're going to talk about the patch system and how that works. Catch you in the next one.